Jordan, welcome to the Group X podcast, mate. It's good to have you here. Hello, it's good to be here. Good to see you. Hey, you too, you too. Let's kick it off as I do with all of them, right from the word go. Mate, how did you get into the fitness industry? Uh, my dad. It's definitely my dad. So he, um, John Kelly, for anyone who knows him out there, I don't want to say his name too much. He'll get a big head. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he, you know, I need, to, I need to reach out to John and say, mate, would you, do you reckon he would? I reckon he would. Yeah. He'd join yeah. on the pot. He loves talking. God, you'd get in there. Yeah. For that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll reach out to him. But anyway, get, keep going. Sorry, I interrupted yeah. there. Um, okay. Yeah. So obviously dad, um, so when I was obviously a baby, he was the aerobic champion. Um, then he became like, he owned his gym, owned gym and stuff. And he became a Lesmos presenter and trainer and all that as well. Um, and so obviously fitness was in our blood. So yeah. there was no getting away from it. Um, and then I sort of, I did rock a step fit and stuff at school. I've, I've, yep. I'm like a self-taught dancer, so I never trained in any dancing. I just sort of liked it and was naturally able to do it. Um, wow. So, and it wasn't until I met Kylie Gates at her house one time that she's like, oh, there's a new program, Body Jam, coming out. And the rest is history. I trained in that, then I trained in combat, and then here we are. Yeah, 22 years I, later. Or that's however it. However long it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great story. Thanks for coming. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that's all we've got time for today. <laughs> Mate, I love that. I just, I, obviously, I know your dad from working when I was working at Les Mills and being living down in Canberra, as we did for, for so many years as well. So what yeah. was that like, though, growing up in, in a uh, sporty, fit household where dad was doing so much? I mean, obviously, it was around you. Were you guys, mm. when, when dad had the gym and you were doing stuff, were you involved in the gym? Were you doing stuff in the gym? Oh, yeah, not? it was cool at the gym. I used to, well, I used to steal all the jelly beans for starters. Um, <laughs> but I used to be the pool cleaner on a Sunday, $5. There we go, yep. clean the pool. Um, yeah, it was really cool because he used to have all his events on, his Travolta aerobics and all that kind of thing. Um, yep. And it was just cool, you know, sort of hanging around the gym all the time and seeing all the events he had on and, yeah, yeah and just being able to swim and stuff, you know. Um, yeah, met lots of people from them, and obviously I still know a few of them now, and I'm a lot bigger yeah. now, but yeah. Um, yeah, a few of them are still are still around. So, yeah. you know, it was really cool. It was good, yeah. And, you know, being around while he was practicing his aerobic stuff back in the day and, you know, all his championship stuff. So, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was cool. So yeah. being in the industry for so long, what was the first role you had within the fitness industry? Was it straight into Group X teaching, or were you doing other stuff yeah. Within the yeah, I didn't. I didn't even want to do the gym. To go to the gym, to be honest. I like. I loved going to school and dancing there and doing rock step and stuff. Um, yep. And then outside of school, I literally just did you know what I could to dance wise. Like yep. we would do the the Canberra Milk Dance Festival and set up our own combined colleges, even though we'll finish school and set up you know all that kind of thing. Yep. Um, but yeah, I wasn't really into the gym or anything as such until sort of yeah I got into Body Jam and then I'm like this yep. is kind of cool and that's when I trained in combat and yeah. So, so Jam was your now first. Now I can't stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jam was my first one. Yeah. So yeah. I think I trained on release. I think it was. I think it was release twenty because they they tried to. I, we got one and two, but then they were yeah. catching up to um, New Zealand. So yes. then it came from release twenty. So I've basically been in it from the beginning. That since it's been in Canberra. Nice. Um, yeah, and you know, trained under Kylie and and taught at Dick and Health Spa at the time before it changed to Fitness First and yep. yeah, and then talk body combat. I used to do my Friday combat and body jam double. <laughs> this is the Group X podcast. The question that I wanted to ask you is your your first training module. It was obviously done in Canberra. Yeah, 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 yeah. At Deacon. At Deacon. Deacon. What was that like for you? Now, obviously, you, as you said, you've, you, you've come from that dance background. You've come from understanding fitness from dad and all that kind of stuff. What was module training like for you as a, as a new person to come into teaching and that kind of stuff? Well, I, I had no idea what it was about. I just knew I was training in this program that dad had paid for, yeah. um, for this da <laughs> dancing, and off we went. So obviously, you know, I've learned a bit more since then, but, yep. you know, I just sort of do what I'm told, learnt my track, and, and I somehow passed. Um, yep. But, yeah. <laughs> Looking back now, if I had known what it was, I would have been a lot more prepared. But, yep. you know, it was one of those things where it was sort of like, a, you're doing this, let's do it. How cool. Um, yep. Yeah. I think did it was you, a lot more laid back then too. But Did you pick it up pretty quickly? Like the, the I mean, obviously you knew choreography and all that kind of stuff, but mm. was, it, was it an easy thing for you to go through that weekend or was it a, a bit of a challenge? Can you um, remember? It was. I think it was half half because I, I think I remember like being able to do the quarry, but I always had to be told to tone down a bit because I was always just go, 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 everything is go, go, go. Um, <laughs> you've got to have that light and shade. So that's where the learning had to come in. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'm still doing that now, light and shade, because um, yeah. I'm always like, just go for it, and then you've got to calm down a bit. <laughs> yeah. I have to tell myself, Jordan, you've got to calm down a bit. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, but I do remember there was a fair few of us there. It was quite a quite a good a good weekend when we did it, and that is when we getting the certificate. And I'm like, well, this is it, cool. What do we do now? And then I was so oblivious to it all because you know every three months there was workshops, and I'm like, Dad, what am I going to now? What is this? I don't. I'm confused. Yeah. So. Now I've been doing it for a while. I kind of know what it's all about. But yeah. that first year, I'm like, what's happening? What do I do now? What do I... yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so talk me back, talk, take me back to not so much the Les Mills stuff, but the first time you got into dance or you realised that you could. I mean, you're talking to someone here that does the, the old dad bod side shuffle. Yeah, I, I'm hopeless uh, at dancing. Yeah, I'm you like, need to show me that. As Shakira <laughs> says, the hips don't lie, and mine, mine just don't move, yeah? My, my, <laughs> Anything. I'm I'm not a good dancer. But how did you when you first realised that you could dance and you enjoyed it? What was it that mm. that made you go? Hey, you know, is it groove? Is it rhythm? Is it? Can you pinpoint exactly what it is that that you love? About I don't know. Dance? I don't know. Like I remember, like when I was in primary school, like they'd have like their little concerts for school, like you know their little performances that they're doing, and I'd always put my hand up. I just always liked it, and yep. like I remember, like. Dad used to always, he still brings it up now, brings up the fact that I would be in my nappy when I was like one year old at the Trash and Treasure in Wagga Markets, um, where, we, where we lived for a while. Um, yep. And there was this little robot that used to always play music and they used to sell, they used to sell balloons at this stand. Like I remember it clearly, but yep. I used to always get up and dance in front of this robot in my nappy. So <laughs> I've been dancing since I was You've a little dancing. kid, basically. <laughs> yeah, so it's always been in my body. So in I guess, body, yeah. yeah, the more... The older I got and the more, you know, in high school and stuff and the more the opportunities there were, I just keep, I just took them. Um, and then yeah. obviously my last year of school, we did Rock of Stepford. It was my final year and I got to be the lead that year. Um, Brilliant. It just so happened that with that one of the local theatre companies, she was one of the judges. So she came yeah. and found me later and she's like, come and audition. And that's how I got into theatre. So, so you're yeah. in theatre as well? Yeah, yeah, I'm in theatre. I'm currently in a show right now, actually. We've got a week left. We've got five performances left. <laughs> Talk to me about that then, because being up on stage as teaching in a group exercise environment and up on stage in theatre production. Now, from a from someone that's never been up on stage in theatre production, I'm just going to go, yeah, look, they're the same. Are they the same or are they very different? Um, they are, because the good thing about it is that with Shabam, for example, and even Body Jam, I can use sort of that theatricality in, in the teaching. But yep. that's where I sort of got to tone back and realise it's not a show. I've still got to be me um, yep. and sort of do that. Whereas in the show, you can be a different character. Um, yep. But at the same time, you're not teaching in the show. You're just there to entertain. So, yeah. you know, there's not as much pressure as such, um, you know. But, there, yeah, there's a similarity, but there's also, like, differences as well. But that's I think probably, I'm just... So that's probably where I went wrong when I was teaching classes. <laughs> you didn't do theatre oh. first. <laughs> <laughs> I was there to entertain. I wasn't there to train. <laughs> Yeah, true. Well, see, but teaching is entertaining. Like you've got to, you've got to be able to entertain. You've got to be yourself, as I say. So I was just lucky that I have that theatrical sort of background as such. Um, yeah, to be able to do that. But then at the same time, I've also got to learn to pull back. So I'm not yeah. being someone else. I'm being me when I teach. So yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Is that is it a challenge to do that? Do you is there a? I mean, there's no switch that you can just go. Oh right, no, I'm I'm in uh, you know instructor mode now, or no, I'm in. I mean, theatre mode. It's, it's, well, I'm assuming it would be a bit of a challenge to not be you because that's not what I'm trying to say. I know you'll always be you, but but switch it off and, and not be as instructor mode or not be as theatre mode. Funny thing is, so like when I, when I do shows at rehearsals, I never – I'm always, believe it or not, like I'm a self-conscious person. Like I get really like self-conscious and, and I, I get too embarrassed to, to just – go out there and do stuff, like just yeah. branch out. So even at rehearsals, I hold back a lot. It's not until I'm on the stage and the lights are on that I just switch into gear. So it's the same as when I go to like to to class. I'm a bit more myself, obviously. Like I go into class and I say hi to everyone, we joke before we start class. But then yeah. as soon as the music's on, like I'm into like here's my teaching mode. So yeah. there's like no inhibitions at that point. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it's really weird. Like people are always like, and even when like I go to parties and stuff, I don't go out and dance. I don't get yeah. up and dance. I don't get dance at weddings. I don't. Very rarely um, wow. do I do that unless I've had a couple of drinks, which yep. doesn't take much anyway. <laughs> um, and yeah. the people are always like, that's so weird. Why do you do that? Like you're a dancer. You're, you're good at dancing. And I'm like, because that's just, I don't, I, like I feel self-conscious when I'm up there. Like I feel like people are looking at me. 
it's, yep. it's very and it's i'm strange i've got <laughs> no mate, no look it's i think it's it's i'll be honest and say it, it's probably and it well it is it's more common than not yeah mm. i know there's so many instructors that i know of that as soon as the music press you press play on the music or that headset's on there's a different personality that pops out mm. there is that yeah. show showmanship that pops out that they they're there to do a job they do it and they do it exceptionally well but mm. you get them one-on-one -on -one to have a conversation or you get them in in a different environment as you're saying like a wedding um yeah, yeah okay there's people up dancing but i'm the same i need to be three parts of the wind in order to get up and you know <laughs> it was, i was at a wedding at the end of the beginning of the year um yeah. that it was the first time in a long time that i actually said to rach come on let's go She's like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. She's like, have you been drinking? I'm like, no, because I'm driving home. But let's just go. Let me check my pulse. <laughs> I said, like, well, let's go. Let's have a dance. Because I was, I, it was a really good mate. And I was just like, you know what? No, all ambitions disappeared. But that is so foreign for mm. me. So I can understand when most people in the same situation, you know, as you're saying, it is, it is a, uh, a very awkward, out of your comfort zone situation until yeah. those lights come on and you're up on stage. And then you go into full righto. Let's do this. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So no, yeah, I know no. I don't even give a hundred percent into rehearsals until like I'm on that stage. It's very yeah. weird. Like, and then and then there's no stopping me. Like, get out of my way. I'm yeah. dancing. <laughs> <laughs> How did the opportunity then come up to be be part of Les Mills um, presenter team? Um, so I had been teaching for a little while, but then they actually had auditions, um, and they don't didn't normally have auditions. They actually had specific auditions for Body Jam. They needed some more sydney canberra based um people so yep. yeah there was a few of us that auditioned and i was just lucky enough to sort of get you know um shortlisted and then yeah got the, got the job it was uh, me and um rachel who's a, currently a, a presenter now too we were both yep. shortlisted for it with a couple of others um but then she couldn't end up doing the day of our final audition which was at a workshop presentation where we sort of just shadowed the workshop yep. um yes yeah, so i was very lucky and fortunate at that time that that um that I got to do that. So, so yeah, the the me, audition I... the audition process that you went through, um, mm -hmm. I, if you don't mind, I want to talk about that for a second, just to give yeah. listeners a bit of an understanding on what that process is, because it's changed so much over the last say ten to fifteen years. I mean, when I first mm -hmm. started, it was so different back then. It was you're submitting your your video, yeah. That's how long ago we're talking about here. Not, yeah, not even yeah. you submitting your video way back then, and that's how it sort of began. What was that process that you went through um, for auditioning? Did you still have to submit something, or was it was it just in front of a small group? Talk us through that. Um, yeah, so it was it was a live audition. So basically, they set up a time after one of the workshops on a weekend in Sydney. So anyone who had expressed interest, they sent us the certain tracks we could choose from. Um, we had to work on our track. We had to present it basically to each other with the um, with the the trainers there watching. Um, and so then we like only a room full, on like, like a handful of people in the room. Yeah. Yeah, I think there was about there was actually I think about fifteen of us at audition. Okay. So we basically went through the tracks together all as one. Yep. Um, and then it was basically one on one, get up and do your track and present to the your fellow participants, uh, your fellow auditionees, as if they were in a class. So, yeah. so we could say it's, it would be similar to um, um, what's the show I'm trying to think of? The show on TV at the moment, something got talent. Australian oh my god! Idol? Yeah, Australian Idol or, or those sorts of where there's people up and you've got your judges and they're not so much you know smacking it, <laughs> smacking the thing and they've got to turn around. <laughs> but you had people in front of you that are judging you. Yeah, yeah. So it was Michelle Dean and um, Anne Marie Pistakakis. It was um, she yep. was the tra head trainer of Jam at the time, and obviously yep. Michelle was the head Les Mills trainer at the time. So they yep. basically sat sat to the side while we just did our thing, and they took notes as they went along. And then a couple of weeks later, we sort of got feedback and whether we made it to the next round or not. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so you was, are you're a presenter and trainer, or just presenter in just presenter. Just yeah. So I started off started off as um, Jam, and then I got onto the Shabam team. Yep. Um, and then obviously COVID happened. Uh, uh, Les Mills Bar. Then I got onto that team too. Um, yep. Just as a um, as a um, what do they call it? The squad at the time. The squad, so whenever yes. they needed yep. someone, um, yep. I'd jump in. Um, then obviously COVID happened, so they sort of had to cut back and rearrange all their sort of. Um, how they did their present, you know, yes. workshops and stuff yep. like that, which everyone yep. had to do. Um, yep. Yeah, and so now currently I am a LM dance um, yep. presenter because obviously Shabam's now moving on so, and LM yep. dance come in, so we all got to upskill in that. 
What's new in fitness? The Australian fitness industry news and commercial gym equipment suppliers website designed to provide fitness industry professionals with knowledge and information to make better informed business decisions. So talk to me about the difference between um, Shabam and Bar and then them going into being dance now because my understanding Shabam and Bar were quite very different programs. Yeah, well, Bar was um, ballet based and strength based, and Shabam was obviously dance based, but it was like solo tracks, and you sort of had a little mini party and told stories throughout the the, the tracks. Um, so yeah, for some people too who are doing the training, it's a bit daunting. But a lot of the people, um, well, as few of the Canberra people who did it, um, they sort of came to me, and I had a couple of sessions with a couple of them. Um, they did really well. Like they just. They like this is something new. Let's just try something different. It's twenty twenty four. You know the opportunity is there. Um, so just do it. Yep. And they did really well. And you know they've all got the certifications. And I think now they're they're really into it and they want to be able to 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 teach it and try something. So um, yep. while it's upsetting that those programs are gone, it's also a blessing because it gives other people a chance to sort of you know try something new and branch out and get out of their comfort zone. Um, so what I think you're trying to say here is that your Tony could probably teach dance yeah why not do it you never know get into it <laughs> oh you make me laugh you make me laugh that, that <laughs> look I, I i think i could probably do the training but whether i'd actually be good uh yeah. at the the dance i mean you know that that's a whole another story in itself yeah, but if you have fun it doesn't matter if yeah. it's good right look, there's a podcast series on that let me tell you yeah i'm only trying to dance and not oh i'll yeah. have to watch it yeah, no, we, I'd need to probably get you on in order to critique and, and you know, oh, you'd God. be one of the judges be going, no, Tony. No, I'd love that. I'm not I won't turn my chair around for you. <laughs> no, I'm watching. I'm turning my chair back around. I don't want to see you. <laughs> yeah, at the end. So you can rewatch it and go, dude, that was atrocious. What was yeah. that? Yeah, love it. <laughs> I'm sure you're not that bad. <clears throat> we'll leave that one alone anyway. Well, look, you know how to ride a bike. That's coordination already. So Yeah, know. but see, it's a bike that goes nowhere, man. I can pedal so fast <laughs> on that thing and it's going nowhere. And I was telling people for years, Tone's just on a bike pedaling nowhere, nowhere fast. It's just, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I think it was always funny. I remember back in Sydney in the day saying to people that we'd get frustrated to be stuck in traffic trying to get to the gym to sit on a bike to go nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, or a treadmill. You just keep yeah. running and getting nowhere. Yeah, in, in the yeah. same spot. For, yeah, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> Mate, how, oh, how yeah. popular are the dance programs um, in Canberra at the moment? Yeah, they're quite good. So Body Jam, um, we've only got like two classes now at um, one of the gyms I teach at. We did have a few more. But obviously since COVID and stuff, things just drop off. So mm-hmm. we're, you know, the two classes that we have are going strong. They get full cl- full capacity in there and they yep. just love it. Um, Shabam, there's plenty of Shabams around Canberra. The that Obviously it's going to change to LM Dance now. Yep. Um, but yeah, with all these new LM Dance instructors now, I, I think we're going to be able to sort of boost the, the dance programs back up here. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'm trying to do is, you know, get um, as many classes on as possible for these guys. Um, so that, you know, all those who didn't have a class before or are trying this for the first time get the opportunity to try that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Is there, do you think there's more space for dance programs in gym timetables compared to what we're currently seeing at the moment? Yeah. I mean, when I ask that question, I mean, the, I suppose the genres that are being offered in a lot of gyms, is there space for dance on every timetable? I think there is. It just depends. Like, for example, like what the gym that I manage, I manage a club line gym in Kingston. The um, the demographic there sort of doesn't warrant those sort of dance classes. They love their bar and we yep. do have Zumba on, but Zumba doesn't do as well as any of the other programs that are more strength-based there. So okay. you've, sort of got to, you've sort of got to work out your demographic. Um, but I think with LM Dance and the fact that it's fresh and new and that we've got all these people now freshly trained in it, it's, the excitement's going to be there, so that it's going to be pushed out to people more. So yep. um, I think a lot more people will get exposure to it, whereas yep. those who sort of didn't know about it before, unless you're at the gym and sort of knew about it in general, yeah. like um, yep. then you're sort of not going to notice it as much. Like, And people know Zumba because Zumba you know, has that, you know, but people don't always necessarily know Les Mills. Um, yes. A few people have said, like, 
not a few, but like regularly I talk to people and they're like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I teach, you know, these programs and blah, blah, blah. Have you heard of Liz Mills? They're like, never heard of it. And then I'm like, body pump? They're like, oh, not really. I'm like, okay, how do you not know this? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I just, I want to just walk away. Yeah, I'll punch them, one of the two. <laughs> how do they not know Liz Mills? Like, come on. Wake um, up. Which, which rock have you been living under? Yeah. Hello. But like people, yeah, there's just some people out there that don't know stuff, you know, and people didn't know about body jam until, you know, I thought sort of throw, threw it in their face. Like, yeah. even now, like, doing this show people are like oh is, do you actually teach a dance a dance fitness class i'm like yeah so a few of them have come and now some of them have joined that gym that i teach at just Brilliant. so they can come and do those classes because they never knew it existed so yeah. Yeah. i think the good thing about les mills dance is it's fresh and it's yep. similar to body jam for those who love body jam yeah. um, but it's also similar to shabam so i think it's going to sort of yeah i think it'll get people interested yeah yeah no look, I, i've always said that the, i believe that dance you need to have dance on on your offering, no matter what, in a mm. gym. Now, whether it's one, two, three classes, or ten classes a week, depending on your demographic, as you just said. But I think that you do need to have that offering there because it can be a service class where you still have, you know, maybe a handful of members that may only sign up just for that class, but Correct. they're going to have those members signing up and being at your gym mm. and not exercising or doing anything at all. Correct. So I think yeah. Every, every, and that can go with any program as well. I think every program has its place on a timetable. Um, it'll just be very much dependent on demographic and also your instructor. Really. This is the Group X Podcast. <laughs> Mate, what's, um, what drew you to, to wanting to actually teach then and, and continue to teach in your clubs? Um, what drew you to that? And, and I suppose what is it that once makes you – keep wanting to do it time and time again? Um, well, obviously, like, doing the training and stuff, it sort of gave me a different view on, on dance and fitness and stuff like that because, obviously, I'd never, you know, sort of... I knew it from Dad, but I hadn't experienced it myself. Uh, I think just the fact you get up there and just everyone has a good time. Um, and then the more I've done it and the older I've gotten and the more I've, I've realised I like to do it... Yes, it's fun and I like to go crazy and, you know, give them a good time and make everyone sweat but i like to see people progress yep. um it's the same as like when i choreograph shows like yes i love choreographing and i do it because you know i want to get you know things out of my brain and onto onto a page but uh, when i choreograph i also am trying to teach people so that i see them progress so by the end of it they feel like they've learned something and they've they've, yep. they've, they've gotten somewhere yep. um, so it's the same with my teaching like I always try and tell people, come back. It's not gonna. It's, it's not gonna be easy the first time. I said, even I sometimes don't get it. I said, but what I do in my classes, I try and do the same routines for a couple of weeks in a row. So if you're new, come back next week, try it again. Yep. Um, and you know, by doing that and sort of giving them people that opportunity and you know, encouraging them, like you know, making sure you're, you're looking at them and if they're new and stuff. Yeah, I've actually in the last couple of weeks had regulars now that were new and now they're here every week. Um, Excellent. Because, yeah. I, I make them feel like they're getting somewhere and that's that's why I, that's why I do it. Not to, you know, get up there and just dance and show off, just because I want to see people feel like they're getting somewhere and, and they're learning and they're progressing and they're comfortable. So yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Now, if you can talk to me about the theatre side of things. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now you you've mentioned that you've you've produced a few different things as well. And what I had a little bit of a read on before, you've been obviously in that, that area for quite some time. Yeah. Talk to us about that and, and I suppose how, how you relate that to also what you do in teaching, but also just give us a bit of an understanding about the theatre side of your life. Um, theatre, yeah, well, I just, I got into it by accident. Um, I never, like, I like to sing and stuff, but I was never a singer. I was more of a dancer and stuff. And as I said, I'm self-taught, so I just sort of learnt as I've gone along. Um, so I just, yeah, auditioned for this show one day after the, the judge from Rocker Stefford um, cornered me in the, in the backstage. And, and then it just happened from there. I just constantly show after show after show after show. And then I'm like, you know what? I loved choreographing. I loved choreographing the Rocker Steffords. Totally different thing, like theatre and Rocker Stefford, which is like, you know, yeah. um, hardcore sort of dancing and theatre is very stylized. Um, so, yeah, I just sort of got into it that way and just sort of, put forward a, a, a proposal one day and got, oh, sorry, one sec. <laughs> Just kicked my, um, kicked my headphones out of my ear. I'm trying to dance while I'm sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and I got the opportunity to choreograph something, and then that, oh, I just realised how much fun it was. And now, just from there, I sort of, um, and doing musical theatre and stuff, it sort of opened my eyes to more genres and stuff. And then, you know, you get to meet different people and then different choreographers from, you know, being on stage as well. So that sort of helped me learn all the different bits and pieces. Um, yep. Yeah, and so then from there, because I sort of got well well known as such in the theatre, you know, local theatre community, then I was given more opportunities and I've had some lead roles um, before because my singing was good at one stage. Um, <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, I just choreograph, and I recently directed a show too, which won a few um, theatre awards around Canberra. Um, uh, yeah, and I've been nominated for on stage awards and choreography awards and stuff as well. So um, it's just I've just been really fortunate and lucky that I've been in the right place at the right time for certain things. So yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Mate, that's, thank you for sharing that with us. I, I really appreciate that. What's what's uh, are there? Are there some some names of those uh, those shows you've been in that we would know of? Um, currently, I'm in Bring It On the Musical, which is based on the 1996, is it? 98? I can't remember. Or 2001? I don't remember what year it was. Yeah, yeah. It's based on yeah. the movie, yeah. Chill yeah. movie with Kirsten Dunst. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I was just recently in West Side Story for the third time, playing a different role, um, which I got, which talk was a bucket list. That, talk, talk to me about West Side Story. Talk to me about the prep sure. you've got to go into, the, the mindset before you're going on stage. Let us know a little bit about that that yeah. side of life. I mean, I find that interesting because it's not something I've ever looked at. You know, yes, I've been to shows, I've seen all that kind of stuff, and I'm just, oh wow, that was amazing. But mm. what goes on behind the scenes, I think, is is fascinating because, as you said as well, from, right from the word go in the beginning there, that until you're up on stage, that's when that presenter side of you comes out and the theatrical side of you comes out. What's yeah. going on behind yeah. the stage? Um, oh, look, it depends on the show. Like, as you said, West Side Story is one of those shows that's emotional, not just, um, you, you got to get your emotion into it as well. Like it's really, it's really tiring because it's so like emotionally draining. So I think I'm more tired, was more tired in that show than I am currently being a 43 year old cheerleader, 17 year old cheerleader. Um, <laughs> just cause just the style of, <laughs> the style of show it is like, you know, it's about, you know, racism and, and, you know, the gangs and all that stuff. And it's basically the Romeo and Juliet story, um, yep. you know, with gangs. Um, so with that role, it's like, yeah, there's lots of anger, but then you've got to sort of have your energy to, for the happy scenes where you're dancing and, and then there's singing, there's acting involved. Um, it's, it was a really tiring process, but it was a really, like, exciting process. Um, what is – me... sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, go. No, I was going, for me, it was different as well because I'd already done the show twice before yep. um, and I'd played a, a role before twice um, and this time I wanted to – go for a different role. So I was actually on the opposite gang this time. So it was something totally different. Um, not only that, I had got given a role, then I was the understudy for one of the, for the lead gang member of that side, um, which I got to do two shows, uh, three shows, performances for that as well. So learning two different roles, separate yeah. to what I'd already knew, um, you know, my head was just like, ah, and I'm repeating lines from, you know, from when I'd done it before and they weren't even my lines, but I knew what was coming up. And <laughs> um, But... <laughs> But that, um, yeah, that show is very like this because there's a big fight scene where, you know, half the people die, um, spoiler alert. Um, so it's like really emotionally draining and like really physical. So um, you just got to be, yeah. What goes into to the lead up of before, you know, before show night, before that first show is on, how often are you training mm. per week and for how many weeks are you, you into um, yeah, because it's local theatre, like community theatre, um, and we've all got full-time jobs, it's usually like two nights a week and then like a Sunday, whether it's a full day or a half day. Um, just depends on the company. But most most companies do at least a half-day Sunday and then like two weeknight rehearsals. So um, How many in weeks? Your own, um, usually 12 to 14 weeks of rehearsals before the show starts. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, just because unlike professionals where they've got three weeks and they've got all day every day, um, yeah. we've sort of got yeah. to... You've got to learn your lines in your own time and then once you learn the choreography and the songs at, at, at the rehearsals, then you've got to fine-tune them at home and make sure you're practising so when you get in there, you can just keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, and obviously certain things you sort of um, – you can't do fully until you're in the theatre until the set's all there. you sort of got to pretend at the yeah. time. And then stuff like fight scenes and stuff, you really sort of got to make sure you're show fit enough that you can keep it going through rehearsals but not drain yourself by the time it gets yeah. to the full – Full show, yes. yep. um, yeah, and you know we've got to sort of mark things at times, and uh, 
yeah, and then just got to get into the zone. So each each company has their different way of, and each director has a different way of sort of approaching things as we go into the theatre. Um, you know, some of us do focus work, some of us don't. It just depends on the style of show and what the director wants to get from you. Um, but most of us, you know, we all get in our circles. We all sort of have a little, this is the moment. This is, you know, night one. This is night five. Yep. It shouldn't be any different to night one. Blah, 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 blah. If the audience don't give us anything, we give them more because, you know, we're there for them. Um, you know, so it's all like, yeah, it's, there's a lot goes on behind the scenes. It's not just, oh, look, there's a show that people pay tickets, my money for, you know, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's tears, nothing. there's tantrums, yeah. there is everything. <laughs> Do you find though that the, the learning your lines and learning what you're learning on stage, you learn similar to how you learn for shabam and dance? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think being teaching for so long, it's helped with both like, you know, learning, teaching for so long in, in, you know, fitness has helped my brain be able to switch on and learn things yep. um, easier and quicker. Um, music side a bit different because I'm not used to that kind of thing. But, yeah, definitely picking up choreography and stuff um, and learning lines. Um, it's, learning lines are similar to your scripting, you know. Yep. Um, obviously, yep. there's a lot more lines in a show. But, yeah, it's still that thing where you've got to sort of make sure it's in the right spot and the intonation's right. And, um, yeah, so they're quite similar. Um but yeah, I like it. I like it. That's cool. Can you? I suppose the, what I want to ask you now is: is instructors, if you can give advice to instructors from your knowledge and from your expertise from both theatre and teaching dance, if there's yeah. one bit of advice that you'd want to pass on to instructors, what would it be? Listen, listen, and take advice. Um, don't be someone who is, thinks they know it all because you might know it all. Like I've even been there at times where I'm like, no, I don't, you know, um, take advice and listen because you never know like how much you can improve or how much change it's going to make for you, even just that slightest little bit. Like, um, yeah, always always be open to, to criticism and, and, yeah, feedback. So um, I appreciate that. Sometimes it's hard. Like I used to be the same. Like I used to be like, oh, God, I don't want to get this feedback. I don't want to be told I'm an idiot, you know, because, you know, I think I did that well. But then if I'm not, then I'm going to hate myself and blah, blah, blah. But you just got to be open to it. You've just got to because that's how you're going to grow. Um, and that's how I think I've managed to to teach so long <laughs> and last in, 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 you know, being able to do theatre so long. You know, we still have our moments. But, um, yeah, you just sort of got to be able to take on that feedback and, yeah, and learn to grow from it. I appreciate that. That's the, the yeah. most unique, honest, direct answer I think I've been given because you didn't even pause or hesitate when I asked you that question. It comes straight out. <laughs> and, I, and I appreciate yeah. that because it's, it's, it's uniquely you. Yeah? I haven't had anybody answer in that way before and it, it resonates with me, um, but I'm pretty sure it's going to resonate with a lot of instructors as well. Is it guys just, yeah. as, as Jordan was saying, listen, take on board any bit of feedback you get because, yeah. if, I yeah. mean, I had someone, I can't remember who it was, one of the guests has said to me, Feed, uh, feedback is like Christmas presents. You, you take the good ones and then you can send the other ones back that you didn't want. <laughs> yeah, was, you take the other ones back. But, but I think it's, you know, if you look at it, it's, it's, it's like not giving feedback on the feedback type stuff. But any yeah. bit of feedback you get or any bit of advice or, or whatever someone's trying to tell you, they're only telling you, and I say the most of people, are only telling you because they want you to do better. Yeah, they don't, yeah. They don't, no one's going to tell you, "Oh, you suck," are they? No one. Yeah. I don't think I've never met anybody that really has the the balls or the audacity to turn around and say to someone's face, "You're shit at what you do." Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Could you imagine? No. I think they'd probably end up with an elbow. I don't matter who who uh, has been told that. They'd probably end up punching it on with whoever's in front yeah. of them. Walk away, going. Or, You're Talk to yeah. You. Or if you are like me, you just go and cry and then don't want to do it anymore, and you second guess everything you've done for the whole like, your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm going to call bullshit on that one because look at what you do, yeah? Look at what yeah. you do day in, day out. You're an instructor. You're in theatre. Yep, someone may have said something nasty to you at one stage, but you got back up. You got back yeah. up. But, see, but that's the thing. That's what people don't see. That's that, that what yeah. that's what I, I, what I would normally do, and that's why these last few years I've learned to, you know, take on that feedback and not take it as a criticism and not then sink into my own hole and get into my head about it. Um, because it just doesn't help anything. And that's why, you know, I try and put that advice to others because I've learned from that myself. Um, yeah. You know, even, even like, you know, you think you know stuff, but then you go and like when we did the filming for LA, like once again, I got into my head cause it was a totally different atmosphere. And, you know, G at one point goes, well, how would you normally get yourself out of this? And I'm like, well, I would normally do it like this, but this is a totally different scenario. So you've got to make sure you're not in your yep. head, no matter what the scenario is, you've got to be able to 
snap yourself out of it, which, which I was really proud of myself at that point when I got to that moment, you know, and everyone got to it, you know, one of the presenters who presents regularly um, on Body yep. Jam, she's like, I'm like that. I've been like that, you know, you, 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 you're hard on yourself, but you get through it and you do, you know, you, you, you find that, you find that, um, that way to get out of it and you work, do what works for you to get out of it and you just, you move on. Otherwise, you know, you're only going to ruin it for yourself. Um, and that's why you yeah, take your feedback on, find a way to get out of your head, out of your, you know, get back into your, into your zone and, and just go from there. This is the Group X Podcast. Now, yeah, you, you'll, you'll you touched on yourself. you touched on LA Live. Let's go there because yeah. I want to know I want to know yeah. that experience for you. Yeah, and the other guests that I've chatted to, it's been a unique experience for everybody. Mm. Talk me through that process from the beginning when you you went, hey, yeah, I'd like to do this, to mm. going and then coming back home. Give us a bit of information about that if you can about your experience oh. and your journey on that. Gosh, this is where we'll get emotional because. Uh... Yeah, I've wanted to do this for like years. As soon as I started teaching and I really got into it, I'm like, there's something I want to do. And then when G started taking over Body Jam, um, you know, originally from when it was Ruth back in the day, um, you know, I just looked up to him all the time. And all I wanted to do was, you know, be able to, you know, at least do that once in my lifetime. Um, yep. And so when that opportunity came up like last year, I just put my expression of interest in. I wasn't expecting anything out of it. I'm just like, you know what, this is Jordan's time to be brave, get out there and just put it. Because I'm one of the kind of person that's like, I want to do all this stuff. And in my head and in my lounge room, I'm confident. But as soon as I have to actually put it forward and put myself out there for rejection, then I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. So I don't do it. That yep. way I don't disappoint myself and get rejected and then feel upset about it. Yep. But last year was um, a few things that happened earlier on in the year where I'm just like, Jordan's got to now, you know, branch out. He's got to do this for himself. This is like the year of Jordan and, and it really was like it was such a rewarding year even though it started off not so good um, and so I just put that application in didn't hear anything totally forgot I'd even done it then I'm like oh let's move Singapore's coming up let's do that you know with the Australian tap team pay all my money go do that literally come back the next week <laughs> you're in the you're in the um the team for body jam for LA I'm like oh my god I spent all my money what am I going to do <laughs> and I just literally saw the email and I'm like is this for real like literally is this for, I read it, I read it again, and then I just burst into tears. I'm like, what's That's happening cool. here? And yeah. I was actually at, um, at one of my clubs with one of the other managers at the time. He's just like, what's happened? What's going on? And I'm just like, look at this. And it was just one of those moments where you're just like, you know, all the, all the stuff that had happened at the start of the year and you've just been working on yourself and working on positivity and working on growing. Yep. It was just that reward that you got at the end of it. And it was yep. just like so overwhelming because it was something I wanted to do and it was just like a, oh my God, this is actually happening type thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it didn't even sink in really. It wasn't real until I was actually there. Like even now it doesn't seem real. Like, but it was such an amazing opportunity. And like, it was one that I, you know, I didn't take for granted. Like, as I said, I learned when I got into my own head, I stepped out of it because I'm like, I can't ruin this experience for myself, you know, and there's also other people around that yep. it could affect as well. Um, but the, the whole body jam team that were selected for the LA were, were amazing. It was just such an ex exciting experience and the atmosphere was amazing. Not to mention LA is one of my favorite cities ever. Like, I go to America as much as I can. I think I've been to LA like six times now. So, wow. you know, to do one of my favorite programs ever, live out my dream um, in one of my favorite cities, I'm just like, you know, what, you know, I could die happy now. Like, yeah. obviously <laughs> I want to keep progressing and, you know, you know, earning more things and doing more yeah. things. But like, I can tick that off as, you know, I'm, I've, I'm like so, so proud and happy that, you know, that all happened. And I'm, you know, so thankful that I got that opportunity. So... Cast your mind yeah. back for me when you were on the plane leaving Australia. Mm -hmm. You're flying down the runway. Yeah. The wheels lift off. Yeah. What was going through your mind? My, you know what was going through my mind? God, I hope I remember this choreography. <laughs> I actually had my headphones ready so I could watch the release over yeah. and over and over. Um, yeah, that's literally what was going through my mind. And because it's Jordan, of course. What are we going to eat? What's for food? When are they giving us our, our meals? <laughs> oh. So it was like body jam or food, which one? Um, that, yeah. that in itself is, is I, love share, I love people being able to share that stuff with people because that's, that's going on in here. Yeah, no one else around you 
would have known any of what you were thinking, what you were feeling, going through any of that. Someone sitting next to you wouldn't have had a clue. They've got their own headphones in, or they stick their head out the window, whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, you're looking at whatever's going on. That that yeah. moment of holy shit, this is real, this is happening. Um, mm. Yeah. Okay. Shit. I need to get my curry down. And when are they going? When are they going to feed me? I think that is brilliant because it's so. Yeah. It's you. Yeah. <laughs> what I picked up from Blood Chatting to you tonight is one hundred percent you. How did? How was the lead up to it? As in the morning of filming. Mm. Yeah. Did you shit yourself? The morning of filming. Do you know what we did? We went in. Uh, we obviously had our costume fitting the day before. Then we were all meeting for a lot of the little rehearsal, and then we made beads. Like we made bracelets with beads. G okay. had brought in his, his bead making kit from his daughter or his son or wherever it was who had it. We all literally sat there and we had a team bonding session making beads. It, it, it just relaxed us all, you know, because we'd had a few, you know, a few days of rehearsals before it. Um, yeah, it was, just, it was just really good. And so we all got there um, and we were just relaxed. And then before filming, they basically get us on stage. We're dancing with the, with the crowd and we're getting, you know, excited and getting all that, you know, extra energy out, that, that yeah. nervous energy. So by the time we got to the actual release, it was just like, oh, here we are, let's do this. Yeah. Um, yep. And it's probably one of the least times I've been nervous in my life. Like, you know, I second guess everything after, but like it was one of those times where I'm just like, I have never felt less nervous, you know, than I have now. So I think just that whole team bonding thing leading up, like who would have thought we were going to be making bracelets? Yes, exactly. <laughs> so exactly. Like exactly. We had our, you know, Body Jam 106, I think we all put on ours and I think I put yep. my name on it or something. But, yeah, so we've got these little memory trinkets now um, to last forever. So, yeah, it was cool. Brilliant. Mate, yeah. that, thank, you, thank you for sharing that. I, I do really Sorry. do appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Coming back home, coming back home. Yeah, you're on the plane. You're coming back home. You touch down. Was there a? And I mean this with respect when I say this. There's every time you have something that's a massive high. Yeah, we know that we come down on the other side. How was the come down from that event? How did you? How did you cope with that? Yeah. See, I I basically had a couple of days off, and then I went straight back to work. Yep. Um, so I think those days, I think I was still sort of not jet lagged, but um, I don't know. I think I was still on that high. Um, yep. It wasn't until a couple of weeks later where I'm just like, oh, now I'm back to reality. Now I'm at work because yep. I was still sort of on that, that, that leave until that I was leave, back at yeah. work. I think it was the second week being back at work where I'm just like, oh, that was it. It's all over now. Like all that, yep. you know, last, you know, two months of lead up and pressure and getting your choreography right and the excitement. It was all over in an hour, basically, after the filming was done. But, you know, because the atmosphere was still there, we're all still there for each other for the filming yeah. weekend. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, getting back and getting, you know, seeing my cat. She was excited to see me, so I was on a high from seeing her. It wasn't until, yeah, it was a couple of weeks into work where I'm just like, ah, oh, this is oh, reality now. Yeah. This is it, yeah. But then, obviously, they start promoting 106 and all this stuff starts happening and it was really cool. Um, so yeah. it was sort of, it didn't last too long. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously then release 106 came out and everything. Now we're up to release 107. So the whole, yep. you know, 106 era is over. But yep. um, yeah, it's still exciting. Like there's still people who I message me now going, we love that release. You know, we learned something from you, um, which I didn't expect that to yep. actually ever happen. Like, you yep. know, because you watch people and they're like, oh, I love how they said that. I love how they did that. And yep. to, to get that feedback even now, you know, someone just like a week and a half ago was like, oh, I use that line that you use and it really resonates in the class. They love it. I love that line. I use it all the time now. I'm like, oh my God, like it's yep. one little line that I didn't think anything of. I'm just like, I'm throwing it in there because I feel like it works. Yep. And you just, you just never know who you're hitting, you know. And if I never do it again, at least I made an impact on someone. So, yep. um, Mate, yeah. so there's still, there's that drop, but there's still that high because you're still, yeah. something's still working for someone in that, yeah. It's the it's almost like legacy. It's going to lead on, leave, leave. It's going to stay there and, and continue to do what it's done in that moment for anybody else that's yeah. actually going to watch or listen or, or engage in it in that way. I think that's yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the most unique and beautiful thing about what we do in the industry. Whether whether instructors are getting an opportunity to present in masterclass filming or even if it's just day to day teaching a class on you know your normal Tuesday night five thirty or whatever it may be, um, mm. we're leaving impact on leaving such an impact on so many people and most yeah. of the time we don't even know 
Yeah, no. most of the time you don't even know that someone has. Yeah, you know, it could have been they come to that class. You know, I've heard some some situations where that was the only time that that person could come to class every week because they're in such an abusive relationship or whatever's going on. That mm. that moment is their one hour of release. Yeah, they're yeah. there. They might fuck up the choreography, but it doesn't matter. They are there no. and they're getting yeah. something from you as an instructor that they weren't getting from being anywhere else. Yeah, and that, exactly. that to and me, I think, is one of the most powerful things as as instructors that we, we yeah, can exactly. pass on. And that's why you sort of got to be in the zone with them in that moment for that hour. You know, no matter what happened, you, whatever you've done in your time during that day, yeah. you've got to give them their yeah. time because they come to, you know, release that stress to see, you know, in your class. So you don't want to cause more stress to them. This is the Group X Podcast. Why do you teach? Why? Mm. I teach because I love, I love being there for other people. As I said before, we don't know what they've been through through the day. People come in and they enjoy your class. They, they want to participate in your class just to relieve, the, you know, get you know, everything off their chest, yep. get the, their day out of, the, you know, out of their head. Um, I teach basically for that. Like originally I taught because I'm like, I love this. This is fun. Like it's a party. We will, you know, meet new people. And it's still like that. But yep. you learn to realize it's not just about you. Yes, you've got. It's just, to an extent, it's about you because you've got to make sure you know what you're doing and you've got to be engaging. But um, you know, you've got to make it about them, and and that's what I said earlier on. Like even when I'm choreographing, I like to. I want people to feel they're getting something out of it. They're not just here because they're forced to be here, yeah. um, or or you know because it's something that they had a spare hour. Um, you know, I want them to feel like they've even if they just step touched. They step touched on the beat this time, you know, and then they added the arm this time, you know. I want them to feel like I, I really want people to, to, to feel like they've actually um, learned something and they can progress and, um, you know, um, it's the same as anything. Like, you know, why do I go to a guitar lesson? Not that I've ever been, but it's because I want to learn to be better at guitar. Yeah. They come here, so I want to be able to teach them. I'm not yeah. a teacher as such, but, you know, what with what I do, I can, you know, give them that time to be able to improve and, and yeah. feel like they've, you know, got something out of it, so... Yeah. That's why I do it. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. John, thank you so much for coming on and, right. and having a chat to me and sharing you and, and what you do and what you've done, mate. I, I appreciate it in a big way. Um, is, there, is there any last words you want to leave with instructors or, or even gyms out there? Um, ooh, good question. Maybe no, instructors, keep doing what you're doing. Keep learning, keep growing because people out there, uh, you know, as I said, you don't know what impact you're making on people. So just keep doing what you're doing. Um, and gyms, give people opportunity. Like, don't cut back classes just because, you know, there's only five people going. Like, you know, those five people, it could be their one thing that they look forward to each time and they've just taken it away from them. Like, I know there's a whole bigger picture, you know, with gyms and, you know, funding and all that kind of thing. But um, just be there for people who want to be there. You know, they're paying their money. Just, yeah. Like be it. there for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mate, thank you. Thank you so much for coming no in. Mate. Greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate you. you and your time. No worries. Good to see you. I'll talk to you later.